everybody. I'm making a quick video on some helpful tips that I've come across uh, since I've started. Now um, you'll see a lot of videos where people are going to tell you not to handle your miniature when you're painting because you get shaky and you'll get hand fatigue. Um, I don't have any but um, a lot of people will use cork uh, to hold their miniature and some people actually will pin their miniature uh, via the base uh, through a pin that they might put underneath and put in or they'll keep the miniature off um, the base and they'll put the pin in the foot and stick it into the cork and um, <clears throat> that's great and then you have other people who don't particularly care to use the cork it's too small or you know it's, it's too small in circumference or height wise um, so what they'll end up using is uh, this medicine bottles like this one here which this one here has um, some granite chunks that I got from a uh, granite tile that broke and some green stuff that I've used, uh, made into um, like a small rocks and stuff so that I have something for basing uh, you can, so you can use something that big or something this monstrously big with this huge cap. Uh, as you can see, this cap definitely, oops, should look at what I'm doing and not the cap. It's definitely bigger than what's needed for that. Um, let's see, this is a medium sized base for War Machine. So, as you can see, a medium sized base for War Machine would fit on here pretty good. And obviously, a large one would be a little bit bigger than that. Uh, do I actually have a large one? No, I don't have a medium. But th that's an option. Or you can even use the these type of bottles that uh, you can get at Wally World or your craft store. And uh, these ones aren't too bad. Um, they're just slightly smaller than the actual bases from <clears throat> from War Machine, and they're actually just slightly bigger than the bases for GW it's miniatures so you could use them for GW miniatures but that's not the hint there the actual hint is um, if you have something in your hand that you can squeeze a little bit your, for your natural your body is your hand is going to naturally want to kind of squeeze something a little bit this is why your pistol grips and your guns aren't um, hard solid. It's why they now have rubber or leather or something for your hand to kind of naturally squeeze. And this will actually help prevent muscle fatigue as well, especially for long durations. So you kind of want the best of two worlds. You want, you know, that nice soft squishiness, but you probably. You know, but you want it on something, and if the cork's not, because this cork will give you that little bit of ply that you need, but it might not be the correct size for what you want. So what you can do is take your medicine bottle, or your dropper bottle thing, and you can go out to the store, and you can go by, and I'm going to cover up the company's name. You can go out and buy first aid hurt free wrap. It's um, this stuff here. If you've gone to the doctor and you've given blood for whatever reason, I'm pretty sure this membrane type stuff is what they've been putting on on you. Now, as you can see here, it is pliable, and this is a cheaper alternative to buying uh, tennis racket grips. Or some other things that you could go out there and buy and this is going to work a lot better than duct taping or putting electrical tape around it I mean yeah you could go up and you could get some foam or, or something or cotton balls and tape it on there but that's just going to get nasty and funky and just sooner or later you're going to have to throw it away this stuff here is self-adhesing uh, so you just cut it with your pair of scissors and you put it on and it sticks to itself 
So basically, what you would do is you'd start from one side, top or bottom, and you just go off and you wrap it, and you just get a little bit of a. Oops, I do a very good job on my very first start. Shame on me. Because the way I'm trying to hold this so I can still get it filmed. I'm not doing too good. There we go. So, I just want to get a little bit of an overlap and I do a little bit more than just a little bit. That's okay. I think you get the idea. Come around, and you can pretty much stop here because I went a little bit thick on my overlap. Take your scissors. I'm just going to use like a knife. Come on, scissors is much better. I don't have any at my desk, so this is going to have to work. And like I said, the beautiful stuff is pull it with taunt. And stuff sticks. As you can see, it stuff sticks right to itself. This is pliable and squishy and doesn't bulk up. This is the thing that you're using, so it doesn't add extra, really too much extra girth to it. And you still get that nice soft squishiness that you're going to want to kind of want in your hand. And try this out. And you'll probably find that this is a much more comfortable to hold this way when painting. Now this can come in, this, the, you can get these in multiple colors. I've been uh, at the VA, they, have, they even have these in digital camo, pink, and whatnot. So you can get that in different colors. Now another thing I do, and for small things like this Menos Shield, for my um, avatar, is you take a little small piece of blue tack, stick it on the bottom. Now, I use a certain type of glue, which you probably can recognize the bottle when you go to your local hobby store. And it's got this nice little small thin cap. So, what I want to do. Just take the blue tank and put it on there on the piece, and bing. Now it will hold my thing. And I can still pull this off and use the glue and put it back on. And this bottle is pretty comfortable, and so you can still paint. And this works really good for smaller detailed items. Another thing I like to use, I was going to put him on a bigger base and show you that even they'll stick on here. And if you're having a hold of a hard time, you can kind of score a little bit with your knife into that area. Another thing I will do is I will take a clamshell case and a toothpick. And you can see on this toothpick, it's really shiny and it's kind of maybe a little bit bumpy. Eh, kinda. Well, that's from the super glue. And what I will do is I'll take my super glue, and you're probably not gonna be able to see it, but right there, it should kind of shine a little bit different. Yeah, and there you go. The focus. That little coloration difference is actually where I dropped my super glue. So what I will do on a more fine detailed piece. That I don't want to just try to glob on, glue on, and hope I don't make a huge mess. Is I will actually drop it here, and in order to get that to stop, you can just put something on there. And I'll take a toothpick, and I'll get the super glue onto the toothpick. And I'm not doing an actual thing because this isn't ready to be put assembled together. This is going to be painted separate. And you just put this, the glue where you want it with the toothpick and then adhere it to the model, the miniature itself. 
and uh, that works really good. And if the super glue has been sitting on here for a little while, it starts to get aerated, and it actually almost becomes like a gel. So you can almost get a gel out of your liquid super glue as well by doing that. And that works really good for getting smaller, finer areas uh, without getting a super glue mess. Another thing I like is if you've seen Awesome Paint Job, Les has this steam scraper that he suggests for removing mold lines, and it works great. And in one of my previous videos, you've probably heard me say that if you're heavy handed like I am, it's probably going to do more damage because it's really easy to dig in with this and without even trying and removing a lot more than just a mold line or flashing. But I have found another good reason, a good, good use for this that I've stated in another video. So, let's say you're taking a marine and you want to pin said arm to body, and let's say this is a metal miniature, not this plastic. So, basically go guesstimate where the middle is. Oop, slid a little bit. And you push, and then you kind of just twist. Just spin it. And this white thing you just fall off the super glue that I've super cleaned. Like I say, uh, it becomes super brittle after being super cleaned. And it comes off and flaky. So if you look here, I got out of dent and I didn't do a very good job of lining it up towards the center. But you can see the little hole. And that would be your pilot hole. So basically, I'm using it to get my pilot hole so that my drill bit We'll go right there, right where I put it, and then I can start drilling. And uh, as you can see, there's no... Come on, focus back in. Focus is a good thing. And it doesn't want to do it. There we go. But if you look, there's uh, not two holes, there's just the one. So it makes a really good pilot hole. So if you, if you don't want to do multiple holes, this is one way to get around doing that. Now, from here, we can go in to... <clears throat> Sorry, I should have got some water, but I don't have any on me at the moment. We're going to go and we're going to use the rest of this miniature. This isn't the correct arm form, as you can see here. But uh, we're going to use this for purposes. So let's say you're pinning this arm to this body. Now, the way I was having a lot of issues with constantly having to put lots of little holes in my miniature and now I did find this from somebody else on YouTube and I don't remember who or I'd give them credit but what you want to do is you want to take the miniature that you want to put it on and just basically put a little bit and that's a little bit more than I need but for demonstration purposes that'll probably work out good so you put the little bit of blue tack right where you're gonna put it then you take the other piece that has the hole and you push it down like I said there's a lot more extra here than what was needed and you push it down to where it's supposed to go but like I said there's a lot more here and this bit pulls up with it and you just need to play with the blue tech I found that your body heat you get the blue tech sticking which is good. Now just give me a second. I'm pulling the blue tech up off the piece because now it's gone into the what uh, to the hole that I need. So I got the blue tech sticky, but unfortunately the very sticky part actually went to the plastic miniature side. So I drilled the hole out on the shoulder. Okay. Play with blue tack a little bit more, get it nice and sticky. This time, hopefully, it will stay on the miniature. Put it on, no, it wants to stay on me. So, we'll swap sides. No, it just seems to like me. So, what you can also do if it's sticking a lot of blue tack, you can take a little bit of water on your finger and then just put the water right on the blue. And that should hopefully stop it from sticking. And then, once again, Line up the arm the way you want it. 
push down where you want to place it, pull off. Now, I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this. Now, if you look, now it looks like an inverted, oh, well, actually, it looks like a nipple on the blue tech right there. And, and that's what you want. It's that little, the nipple piece, the areola, and then there's the nipple. And uh, I'm sorry if I'm using uh, human body parts, but uh, most of us are men who watch these things, and uh, we do really good with sexual references. That's how I was taught how to shoot in the military. Uh, especially when I went to sniper school but um, so what you want to do is you actually want to put your drill bit in to that nipple because that's exactly where you're going to want the hole so you put it in and then you start drilling and a little bit of the metal or plastic depending on what you're doing is going to come out and you just grab that and throw that away and then the rest of the blue tack you can keep and keep reusing, reusing it and uh, every time you're gonna get your holes lining up perfect so as long as you get this where you want it and you put the hole in the correct place and you make sure that the uh, face of the, the bit is flush with the face of the part that's going to be drilled because usually if if this is straight and this is straight like they, they're flush together when it comes time to go in here it will line it will line up correctly your pin won't be all jacked up where if you come in let's say we, we drill that straight and flush but when we come here we don't drill it straight and flush I drill it at a 45 degree angle well by putting it into this angle your pins never gonna work you're gonna have to re-drill or you're gonna have to drill it out and bore it out some so that the pin will actually go in correctly and that's just a pain and a harass and a hassle. So as long as you do that right, that technique is going to get you the hole exactly where you want it every time. And it is a godsend on really large miniatures to have a really large surface where you're just trying to put one pin into it to keep it together, or you're doing multiple pins, and it prevents you from having to guess and put multiple friggin holes in and you have to drill a bigger hole because it's right next to where you want and the stupid bit keeps sliding right off so I hope 